Well, as we continue in our series, we've entitled Jesus Lies. Today, I actually want to address one of the most common lies that I hear about Jesus, and it's a lie that I hear repeated again and again and again. Most often, I hear it repeated by well-meaning followers of Jesus. And it's a lie that actually says that if you'll turn your life over to Jesus, then the rest of your life is going to go magically smooth. It'll just go smoothly. And it's the lie that says turning your life over to Jesus will ensure that you're going to live a troubled, free life life. And you and I both know that that's not the truth. I mean, but that lie continues to be repeated again and again. And here's the truth. Jesus never promised a troubled free life. And in fact, Jesus actually said here on earth, you will have many trials and many sorrows. And that's what we know is true. We know Jesus' words are true. We experience lots of trials and we experience lots of sorrows in our lives. And right now you and I are living in the middle of some of those sorrows and some of those trials that Jesus was talking about. 2,000 years ago. And it's actually hard to believe that it was just about 10 weeks ago when the leadership of LCBC, we met together and we asked ourselves a crazy and maybe what seemed like then a far-fetched question. And, and we said, what happens if we get shut down because of the coronavirus? And, and what if that shutdown actually lasts until July the 1st? And never thinking it would really happen, but just trying to be ready, just trying to plan for the worst case scenario. And, and then it happened. When all this first started, we thought COVID-19 was just going to be this interruption in our lives, and an interruption that would cause us to have to stay home maybe for a few days, possibly even a few weeks, and, and then everything will be back to normal. But COVID-19 has not just been an interruption. We might even call it a disruption. And see, an interruption is more of a temporary pause. It's like an annoyance or a bother, but a disruption actually brings change. It brings change to the way we live, to the way that we operate, the way we see life. This has truly been a disruption. Now, throughout history, God has used disruptions to accomplish his purposes in the world. And I want to give you an example of how God has taken a disruption and he's used it to accomplish his purposes. And so after Jesus' death and his resurrection, he actually instructed his followers. He said, look, this is what I want you to do. I want you to be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. In other words... Get Jesus to the people is kind of what Jesus was saying. Make sure that people everywhere know about Jesus. Now, I'm sure that the followers of Jesus intended to do that. I would even imagine that they strategized and they met and they talked about, how are we going to tell everybody everywhere about Jesus? And I guess they talked and they talked and they strategized and they strategized and they talked some more. But here's the thing. They never left Jerusalem. They never did what Jesus actually asked them to do. That is, then along comes this major disruption. And we read about that disruption that these followers of Jesus first experienced in Acts chapter 8, verse 1, when it says, A great wave of persecution began that day, sweeping over the church in Jerusalem, and all the believers except the apostles were scattered through the regions of Judea and Samaria but it took a disruption to get them out of their comfort zone. And it was an awful disrupt disruption. The, the followers of Jesus, they were put in prison. They were murdered. It was an awful time for it to be a follower of Jesus. And you and I are in the middle of a major disruption. Anything that goes on for 10 weeks and counting is a major disruption. But we need to be real clear about this. In no way is what we're experiencing today comparable to what the early church experienced. No, we can't gather and worship the way we did 10 weeks ago, and, and, and we can't greet each other and see each other like we did before, but, but we can still worship, and we can still talk about Jesus. So make no mistake, what we're experiencing today is nothing like what the early church experienced, but this is still a disruption, and we are experiencing trials and sorrows. And and while I don't claim to know all that God is doing in this particular disruption, I do know that God is using this disruption to change, to bring about change to our church, to bring about change to all churches, His church. And I know that not everybody likes the thought that God is somehow in this disruption, but you need to understand He is. God is very much at work right now. And in this particular disruption, I would tell you that we as a church, LCBC, has changed. And you might wonder, how has LCBC changed? What's been the biggest change for LCBC during COVID-19? And, well, I would say what's happened is that we've gone from a church with 15 locations that happens to be online to now being a church that believes that what happens online is every bit as important as what happens at our 15 locations. 
I've told you before about a visit several of us on our leadership team here at LCBC had a few years ago. We headed down to Chick-fil-A to their headquarters in Atlanta. And, and while we were visiting with the leadership of Chick-fil-A for several days, we came away impressed with Chick-fil-A's goal as an organization. And, and we were actually surprised by their goal. You see, they said their goal is to get chicken to the people. And they said they're in the chicken business. And what surprised us is we thought they were trying to get people into their stores and they love their stores, but they said, no, our goal is not simply to get people into our stores. And, and you need to understand their stores are doing great. I mean, just try to get food from Chick-fil-A right now. And, and especially if you go Lancaster, Belmont, and, and man, I think I told you, Ruth and I waited 35 minutes to, to get just up to order our food the last time we were at Chick-fil-A. And, and so we came away from our experience in Atlanta and we said, you know what, okay, if their goal is to get chicken to the people, then really our goal is very similar. But for us, it's not about chicken. For us, it's about Jesus. And we said, really, our goal is to get Jesus to the people. Our goal isn't just like Chick-fil-A. It's not to get people to come into our buildings, though we love our buildings. And it's really about getting Jesus to the people. And so you need to understand today that because of this disruption, through COVID-19, LCBC has changed and we're thinking differently than we thought before. And it's, it's actually taken us back to our roots. It's reminded us that LCBC is all about getting Jesus to the people. And, and online is not just a tool to broadcast what we're doing in our buildings. Instead, online now is a way to get Jesus to the people. It's a way for people to fully engage in Jesus and in LCBC. And here's the cool thing. Because of the disruption of COVID-19 and because we've been forced to work only online for the past 10 weeks, no longer are we really even a church of 17,000 people. Now we think we're a church of closer to 20,000 people, 20,000 people connecting each weekend, 20,000 lives that are being changed by Christ. And in the middle of this disruption, again, we've got to remember, God is still in the business of something, making something good out of a bad situation. And here's what you need to know. Our goals haven't changed. Our goal is still to introduce more people to Jesus and fully follow him. Our goal is still to get Jesus to the people. So here's what we're planning. We will at some point regather in our buildings. We're going to do that. We know that. We will regather when guidelines allow us to regather. So we know we're going to regather in our buildings. We will do it when guidelines allow us. And when our physical gatherings actually offer a unique value over online gatherings. When there's something unique about coming back into our buildings, then we'll regather together in our physical buildings. And so to be honest, what we're asking really are the questions are these. A time is going to come when we could regather, but what we're asking is should we regather right away? And, and what we're also asking is when will people be comfortable coming back, returning to our buildings? All of that said, let me just share with you our phased approach of when we could regather, or maybe even better, when we should regather as a church. And so currently, we're in kind of the red phase, and, and the red phase says no more than 10 people getting together at one time. And so what we're doing in the red phase is saying, man, online, what we're doing now, let's do everything we can to offer everything we have online. The next phase, our first phase, will be the yellow phase. And, and again, we'll continue to do everything that we're doing online. But in the yellow phase, once we're allowed to have more than 10 people gather together, our encouragement is going to be to gather together in homes. And maybe that means inviting more family in with you. Maybe that means your small group. Maybe that means your neighbors. But home gatherings. And what I like about this is it's kind of going back to our roots as a church and LCBC's beginnings and gatherings in the home of Donna Joyce Hershey. Or if you want to go further back, it's really going all the way back to our roots, the first churches ever that existed right after the death and resurrection of Jesus. And they gathered in homes. They weren't in big buildings like we do today. They were in homes and they gathered together there. Second phase of just all of this is when we hit the green phase. And at that point, we'll continue to do everything that we're doing online. And we'll also continue to say, man, gather in homes together. And then we'll begin some trials. Trials and just say, let's just try it in some of our buildings, or let's try some things out in our communities and see how it works. And then our third phase, again, the green phase, everything online, continuing to encourage home gatherings. And then when we can offer just a full menu at our physical locations, we say, okay, Let's open back up completely. Let's regather in our facilities and let's come back together. Now, I know this plan won't please everyone, 
For some of you, it'll be too slow. For some, you'll say, oh, that's way too quick. And, and I know there's no time limits because, again, we'll be dictated by the guidelines that are given to us. And, and then for others of you, you'll say, this plan doesn't answer any questions. It doesn't tell me when anything is going to happen. And you know what? That's okay. We don't know all the answers. And I, mean, I hope you do know that it's okay to say, I don't know, don't you? And here's what I do know. In the middle of disruptions, God could do more than you and I could ever dream or imagine to be possible. And here's what I do know. Our God will never fail, and God is still in the business of making something good out of a bad situation. Now, what you need to know is this isn't just true for churches. God can make something good out of your life as well. God can take something good, can make something good out of whatever situation you find yourself in today.